Welcome, everyone. Today I'm interviewing Shiv Gupta from Incrementers. He's based in Delhi, India. Thanks for your time today, Shiv. Thanks for having me here, Troy. Very excited to be here. And you're the first guest we've had on from India, by the way. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're both, <clears throat> before we hit record, we're talking a bit, but yeah, we've both got a love of cricket. Uh, so it'd be good when I get out to India um, eventually. And, and if you do make it back to Australia, pop down to Tasmania. Yeah, sure. Like, I guess. Every Indian out there, like they, they love cricket, right? We are big fans mm. of of cricket, so yeah, it would be fun to have you here and have a chance. Yeah, maybe next time India and Australia are playing a test down here, uh, might be a good time to align a trip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that can be the case as well. <laughs> yeah. Let's start with how we know each other. So mid-February, you filled out the form on my website to come on as the show as a guest, and uh, and I think we've had to shuffle times a couple times, a few times now. But here we are. Tell our audience a bit about your business, what it does, and how it makes money. All right. So basically, we help clients in generating more leads and sales online. So we are a digital marketing agency. And we provide search and optimization, pay per click, email automation, those type of services. Basically, if any company is looking to increase their visibility online, generate more business online, so we are there to help them. I'm going to ask a, a, a bit about this uh, on SEO. Do you, th- it's, do you think SEO is still relevant these days? Oh, yes, it's definitely relevant. And uh, a lot of people say that SEO is that and I feel that they say this because they don't know how to do SEO, right? SEO is uh, not about creating backlinks anymore, right? It's about being available on the right place at the right time. For instance, right now we are talking about uh, how to grow small business, right? And we are a marketing agency. So there can be a case when a small business is listening to a podcast and they see me and they come to my website, right? You'll be giving me uh, probably a link to my website as well, right? So the, the way SEO works now is to be present at the right places, right? Instead of just creating uh, useless backlinks out there and saying that you are, you are doing a ton of work, right? Like Google has evolved. And quality matters, right? Quantity doesn't matter at all. So it's, it's better you create 10 backlinks, but those 10 should be worth it instead of yeah. making tons of that. Yeah. And you've got, uh, you work with companies all around the world and many different industries. Yeah. Like our company, uh, like majority of our clients are from US, Canada, UK and Australia. Yeah. yeah. So majorly English speaking countries, right? Those are the areas from we get our maximum clients for and most of them fill out the form on our website and that's how we contact them. Yep. Are there any industries that you work more with than others? Uh, Majorly, uh, we work with service-based industries like people who are like, for instance, chiropractors or doctors or hair transplant surgeons, like who are looking to, who have a local business and who are looking to increase their footfall, their clinic footfall or overall uh, traffic to their website and to their clinic or to their store. Can tell the audience how you started out? Uh, basically, I started out as a freelancer for a couple of years. Uh, I did freelancing and the client for whom I was working, uh, he encouraged me to open up my own, own agency and uh, gradually he outsourced me a lot of work for a couple of uh, years and together with him I started taking few more clients and that's how I started out. Basically, uh, I, I really enjoyed doing marketing for, for clients, thinking uh, out of the box how we can uh, uh, craft their message and send that uh, out there in the world, right, reach to the correct target audience and even even today when I uh, take any website or think about it, right, or craft things around it, it always makes me feel very good and happy. Like I just love doing marketing and that's how like I kept attracting towards this more and more by each passing day. And that's how I started out. What year did you start and how old were you? Uh, this particular business I started in 2012 and before that for two years uh, I was working with few clients right on freelance basis. 
Great. Well, 10 years. Congratulations. <laughs> yes. And how old were you then, 2012? Uh, in 2012, I was 19 or 18. Yep. Right. And do you have some key numbers you can share to illust- illustrate the growth of the business over those that decade? Uh, in most of the years, uh, we have seen a growth of uh, more than 10%, like two-digit growth. And uh, there were there was a big time right for a duration of three years I would say when I was stuck at a team size of around forty five to fifty people. Some people used to join us, some people used to leave us. Right? Sometimes we had more clients, some sometimes we had more team members. So, like I guess everyone faced such type of challenges as well, right? But right now uh, uh, we have a team size of more than hundred members, yeah. and uh, just the way we got stuck for a couple of years the same way like during uh, the time of pandemic we increased we we saw a growth of 45 percent because a lot of people were coming online and we started uh, marketing in different ways because everything was changing around the world so you see your ups and downs but on an average if i say like uh, we have uh, uh, like two digit growth every year and a team size of more than 100 which you can measure as a key yeah. key growth that's, indicator. That's great. Congratulations. And how many people did you start out with? How many full time equivalents? Yeah, I started with three people including me. So we were just three yeah. team members, right? It was self funded system. So uh, like the money which you used to earn from the clients like was used to pay out the salaries and all the office expenses. Yeah. When was the moment you felt like you had succeeded? It's a kind of a subjective thing. But I guess the time uh, when uh, recession hit and we somehow managed, the right team was dedicated, they came up with a lot of solutions and even during the phase when everything was going down, I was seeing a lot of people from my same industry were running out of business, they shut down their offices, we were growing, right, and we hit a team size of 100 people. So I guess that was the moment when I felt that yes, we have succeeded because uh, a lot of people say that it's difficult to reach from 0 to 1 million, but it's easy to reach from 1 million to 1 billion, right? And we hit that goal as well. So that was the time I, I felt now things would be easier. <laughs> like you see your uh, new challenges daily, but still, like uh, the, the path moving forward would be you won't be alone. You'll be having ton of ninjas with you who will help you in, in growing and achieving the, the goals and targets which you want to meet. Yeah. What does success look like to you? It's the curse and blessing of being an entrepreneur. Like you get to see a lot of new challenges daily and you uh, work on solving those. So to me, I guess I have started enjoying this process of fixing the problems, right? Uh, creating better product for the clients, delivering better services. So to me, uh, like success is like uh, completing your small, small goals which you make for yourself, right? It can be anything. It's not just always revenue or your sales target or your profit or profitability. It can be small things. Like last year, I was heavily working towards the system and processes because we wanted to uh, work in the hybrid structure plus a lot of things were changing around the world, right? Uh, last year was the time when uh, we were not focused heavily towards the, the sales or the revenue targets, right? We were more focused towards setting up all the systems, all the processes in our organization which because I feel that is very important thing. We had a couple of things but we wanted to take that to the next level. So last year and, and I achieved that. So for that year, that was the meaning of success for me. And this year right. I have a few more plans, right? So that's what success looks like to me, like achieving your small, small goals, like growth is su- success, right? It can be growing in any area of your business, not just yep. your revenue or one particular area. Number one thing you'd recommend to marketing a fast growing business? Uh, The number one thing which I recommend to all the businesses like who are growing fast is like 
it's up to you. You can use any channel, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram for your marketing purposes, right? You can look out your competitors and see what they are using. Probably that strategy would work for you. But you need to make sure that the messaging which you have, the USP which you have created, the buyer persona which you have created is good. Right, because if you craft your messaging properly, if you are actually talking about the needs, desires, and pain of your targeted audience, then like you can choose any platform because audience is everywhere, right? So you can choose any platform and start sending out those messages, and people will start following you, people will start trusting you, provide them solutions related to the actual problems which they are facing, not just random blogs. So that's what I would say, right? Lot lot of people they they publish tons of blogs on daily basis, but those blogs are not solving any problem. They are just data copied from other blogs, curated and posted on on your own website. So it doesn't work that way. So yeah. in, in, uh, the, the the most important advice which I'll give to the fast growing businesses is craft your messages. Just sit down, think properly craft your messages, think about your USP, uh, figure out your targeted audience because a lot of people say we sell to everybody and if you are selling to everybody that means you are selling to nobody, right? Yeah. So you need to think about your target audience and craft your messaging around that. Once you have done that, you can use any platform and you will start seeing the results. People will start approaching you for uh, work and for, for help. Yeah. And you started using the Net Promoter Score earlier this year. What's your number? Uh, yes, actually, uh, we also use customer lifetime value. Yeah. And uh, the Net Promoter NPS number, which we achieved is 76.5, right? And wow. Like 120 clients filled out that form. Yep. And out of those clients, uh, like 95 gave us a rating of 9 and 10. And yep. uh, 22 clients, they gave us in between 6 to 8. And yep. to <laughs> my surprise, 3 clients were not happy, right? So, which makes it 2.4%, uh, 2.5%. So, I'm really going to work uh, for those clients and <laughs> improve the score there. But overall, the score is 76.5. That's great for the audience. It's not a percentage, it's a positive or negative number. I've written a blog post on the website about how to work it out, which I think I sent through to you. And it's that's a phenomenal achievement. If you can consistently be in uh, even over 50, positive 50 is really hard to do. So well done. Yeah, thanks a lot. And I guess if anybody is having a negative number, then they'll probably run out of business very soon. So, yes. So then yeah, they will. Yeah, start working towards it aggressively, right? Instead of focusing on marketing, they should focus on their products and their customer service and, and relationship. A lot of people, they just send the reports, right? Or send the stuff to the client. They don't communicate. They don't get opportunity to, to do some sort of social networking, I guess. Uh, that's also important thing, right? You need to have some sort of relationship with your customers as well, right? Create a couple of touch points, right? I advise, like for instance, in our organization, what we do is we have created different types of touch points with our customers, right? Different type of service which we send on monthly basis, right? Or we set out time to ask them what are uh, the other areas where we can help them in their business growth, right? Because all these items help, not just the, it should not be the transactional relationship, right? Because that doesn't go well and uh, like everyone lose the interest yeah. in that process. But you once you have a relationship, uh, it really changes the game. Yeah. And funding, <coughs> excuse me, and funding your business, you mentioned that uh, it sounds like you were just uh, growing through reinvesting the profits. You haven't taken on bank finance or investors? No, we haven't taken any bank finance or anything. Like all the money which we generate from the clients, we use that for further marketing and the other business operational expenses. Yep. If you were to start up today with plenty of funding, would you go into your industry? Uh, uh, that's kind of tricky. <laughs> there are a lot of things in the tech space these days. Uh, if you like, if I would get uh, funding today, like marketing is fun. I I enjoy that. So probably yes, I'll choose the same industry, but I'll increase 
bit of share towards metaverse marketing because metaverse is the next big thing which is coming out there so and we are doing some research towards the marketing of metaverse as well but yes that's something where i would like to spend little more time and you outline the most stressful point in your small business growth journey so our audience can learn from it most stressful point like you won't believe it but the most stressful point was the time when when we were getting tons of clients and it was a chaos everywhere right it it's it's very difficult to to deliver properly right you are recruiting you are putting your workforce in recruiting more people training them than accomplishing the client's goal and it's very difficult to stop your marketing when you are getting clients right so that was the most stressful point i had to work longer hours my team was working longer hours we were working on sundays as well though it's fun but at the same time you need to take out some time for yourself as well right yeah. so that's when i understood that uh, all the systems all the processes should be in place right that's uh, even even that is the number one tip which i give to any small business right like you cannot just run after marketing and operations sales no. and operations right some of, some people don't even do marketing so that was the stressful point but finally we have solved that as well right things are in place and we have sops and each and everything for all the processes which we have a proper training system we have uh, team members who can take the places if someone leaves mm. the organization so those type of subscribe the sop for the audience is a standard operating procedure that's yeah that's very um very good to hear shiv what area in business do you feel you've had to work on the most to add the greatest value most important area uh, number 1 was the product development because once you take care of your clients everything else follows right so you need to make sure that your product is good you are confident because once you are confident it is very easy for anyone to do the marketing for anyone to do the sales because you are confident and the buyer can see that in your eyes right that you will be able to deliver it yourself once your product is good you get lot of referral referral work as well once your product is good the client should left because of some other reason they also come back to you right so i in in my initial time i spent lot of my time towards the product development now we have innovation team as well uh, the r and d team as well who keeps on looking for the better solutions out there other than that these days i am spending my time towards the marketing because someone else has taken the operations team what have you enjoyed the least about managing fast growth that's the part right <laughs> like you uh, if you enjoy your work you enjoy every bit and piece of it right so with the fast growth growth you are getting clients you feel good there is a cure but that is a good problem to have yep uh, it's it, it, it's it's a good problem to have and in in, in this uh like business world you always get new and new problems each passing day you become comfortable with those so i would say i enjoyed each and every moment of of the fast growth which you were having what do you love most about managing fast growth i love tackling lot of different type of scenarios lot of different type of problems spending time in brainstorming right and having a proactive approach so that even before anything arise you have a solution for it so that's that's the the, the best part which i enjoy thinking ahead of the curve and thinking what are the other possibilities other errors which we might face right and how to solve that so that's the part which i love most about the business and obviously serving the clients what has been the biggest mindset shift for you in your small business growth journey uh i'll be honest with this one like uh, as i mentioned that during the initial years it was uh, it, it's a self funded business so during the initial years i hired people like who were looking for very less salary right and for the initial years there was no one in the room who was smarter than me but later i realized that the smarter people you have the better problems they can solve right it's a foolish thing to be the smartest person in the room right entrepreneurs 
they 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 enjoy feeling like god that anyone comes to them with the problem and and they they just solve it they feel like they are very smart right but uh, but like to all the entrepreneurs who are listening to this podcast right now that is a uh, that is the biggest mistake which uh, i have done in in my journey so far you need to hire people who are smarter than you who have grown business like yours right hire them at a at a better pay right and they will really make your life very easy and and for this i recommend a book as well which is who the method uh the a method for hiring what is the number one habit you think a small business owner needs to develop and maintain uh there are a couple of days when like business owners don't feel like going to the business right and the number one thing uh, the number one habit which i recommend them is be consistent yeah. right lot of people they try marketing they try one platform and after one or two months they stop doing that right i am into mark i am running a digital marketing agency and even i have a youtube channel as well and for the initial 100 videos right we were just trying to organically improve the subscribers and the views and for the initial you won't believe for the initial 100 videos i only had 124 subscribers right so what are you up to now <laughs> <laughs> it's it's growing it's growing at a little faster pace but even now it's not very high i started my channel uh, last year right i constantly yeah. keep kept on creating the videos so the number one advice is be consistent yeah don't stop in the mid right if you are consistent gradually success will come yep uh, you've got over 100 team members now over 10 years you've grown from 3 so can you talk to how you've had a people to the team some wins mistakes and advice for those listening while hiring or adding team members you need to make sure that you are not just doing gut based hiring you need to do evidence based hiring right yep. you need to have couple of different type of tests or round to make sure they are fit and when the owner is taking the interview right lot of people what they do is they just try to hire people who are fitting their budget but that should yep. not be the case you need to make sure that the person you you are hiring is uh, like culturally fit for your business and you need to make sure that their personality is good they are positive like because a single toxic person yeah. can lead to leave like can can create a chaos in your organization and i have seen yeah. it right because of one toxic manager like even their entire team can can resign right so you need to make sure that you uh, like as someone has said you should take your time while hiring but if you need to fire someone be quick right yeah higher fast higher slow higher fast right so yeah. i i follow that we have different type of uh, test which we take and uh, after every 6 months we go and check them again whether we need to upgrade those what what's the result what type of people are performing the the best so yes and lot of people what they do is they just pass the hiring process to someone else on their team who is not capable of enough of on determining the quality Uh, or the type of person like which you might need and they see that hiring is is just a easy task right but that's not the case you need to make sure that the person you are hiring is actually good for your organization because uh, you would have seen like even the best performer but with the worst attitude right gets fired in some of the cases so it's not just about the performance if someone is showing that they have uh, delivered that type of performance in their previous organization that's a good thing but you need to make sure that the the personality of that person is also good a lot of people don't look into that so that's one advice which i'll give and yeah. uh, based upon this the hiring which i have done like in in or at a senior level when i hire someone it's just like a marriage <laughs> <laughs> I I I drill that down uh, the the entire thing properly right I have read more than 10 books for hiring alone right wow so that so that I could make sure that the entire hiring process and the entire interview process is streamlined right lot of people what they do is if they have an HR or if they have two or three rounds 
and up if a person like i have literally seen this uh, like if a person has written skydiving in their hobby in every round like all the interviewers were asking the same question okay so tell oh, yeah. your hobby is skydiving so tell us a little bit more about it right and that's Relevant when to the job yeah that's when you deviate and start hiring wrong people right mm-hmm. all the interview all the uh, rounds should have a proper agenda what exact thing you are going to check right whether you are yeah. planning to check up the how, what's their performance in their previous organization or maybe their skill set or maybe uh, their personality or maybe how they tackle the problems right but uh, like it should be different type of agenda while hiring so those are few things that uh, i would uh, advise to couple of people that take your hiring seriously and read couple of books as uh, evidence based hiring is another one which i read right that yeah, would absolutely. literally encourage you to do evidence based hiring not just gut based right because yeah. a lot of people they do gut based hiring and then they cry <laughs> Yeah, and back on attitude, if they've got a shit attitude or they're an asshole, then your your A players are going to start leaving the team if you don't get rid of that bad apple pretty quickly. What are some things you recommend to building a sustainable and kick-ass culture to help with the growth? To a lot of people who think that kick-ass culture is just throwing some parties, right? Uh, on a monthly basis, celebrating few birthdays, and your culture is good. it never happens that way a lot of people just uh, think culture in that sense right so i just want to correct all of them so uh, for a kickax culture right even like even if you don't talk about culture right i think that for a happy environment there are only few parameters which you need to make sure the first one is that you are challenging your team enough if you are not challenging them then gradually down the road they'll like they they Old lose life. all the interest in yeah. the work which they are doing and they will start finding problems in small small things not just with the work with everything right so the first thing is challenge your team enough second is have a uh, proper meetings right probably one on one meeting would be best if you can take a time or monthly or quarterly basis to discuss yes, sorry, but but you don't do them weekly you don't do them weekly but well, that's yeah weekly is for review meeting right where yeah. you uh, review the performance of the team members what they have done good how how they can be improved but the one on one team meeting which i am saying is that is more towards aligning the goals setting yeah. the objectives of the person uh, trying to understand what they want to achieve and how the company can help them to achieve that goal right yeah. and once that is set then regularly talk about the the successes failures how we can do it what exactly we need to do to re- recalibrate for instance if i want to go from us to australia then obviously i need to know my destination right that i i want to reach to australia now during that course of time there are a lot of more than 100000 times when the plane recalibrates itself towards the right direction right so the weekly meeting is for the recalibration for the correct direction but that from us to australia that type of conversation should be uh, on quarterly basis that's what i mean uh, tell our audience how you've handled balance uh <laughs> like i guess i'm not uh, that type of person who can give work life balance advice because for me my life is a holiday <laughs> like yeah. i enjoy my work right i am very passionate about it even when i'm sleeping i am thinking about my business even when i'm at work i'm smiling and having fun with my team members or we are having some sort of brainstorming and critical thinking right so i really enjoy the process right my work is not exactly work for me so 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 like 24 plus 7 my brain is <laughs> at my office How much professional development have you invested in yourself over the years? Sounds like it's a lot. If you've read ten books alone on recruitment, which is the most I've ever heard of of a guest here on the cast, you must be big into professional development. Actually, for personal and for the team development, right? The most important thing is getting trained, learning new things. Because if you are learning new things, that keeps your mind motivated and on the right trajectory. if you are learning you new things you start seeing better opportunities and better way of doing the things which you have been doing right 
and that keeps pushing you to do better to perform better so for me uh, the best thing for professional development is having a proper training sessions reading books listening couple of podcasts like i have heard two or three of your podcasts as well and they were very encouraging like i, I learned couple of things from there as well so listening to podcasts reading books having training courses if you are struggling with something just go and get a course buy a course about it right now we were just studying about eos model right so so there are a lot of things just keep on doing keep on growing that's the biggest development advice which i can give to anyone have you had mentors or coaches along the way oh yes 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 mm. they are very important part of my life so yes i have a business coach right from past 2 years and they have guided me in in tons of areas and apart from that i keep on enrolling myself in different type of workshops to see what are the different and what are the new things coming out there what are like like you you just get a opportunity to talk to the best minds out there right yeah. people who have solved the problem which you are currently trying to solve so yes coaches and mentors are a very crucial part they they speed up the process uh, of growth right they help you in setting up lot of things so yes i am like they are here to stay with me for my life right yeah. I, I, for my entire life i am going to stick with couple of coaches what do you think is the hardest thing in growing a small business the hardest thing is understanding and doing marketing lot of businesses they just focus on sales and operations and they do marketing only when they have free time yeah right and that's a challenge in the in the mindset which i have seen to lot of businesses right you need to consistently do the marketing right even when lot of clients are coming to you that is the best time to do the marketing because if you are doing marketing at that point of time you would be choosy you will pick up good customers right and when the bad time comes right lot of people they start spending time in marketing at that time but at that time whosoever comes to you you just you are forced to agree to their terms right so just constantly do the marketing lot of people when sales increase they stop the marketing but according to me that is the best time to do the marketing because yeah. that raises your standard that gives you a better growth you get better quality clients so the the most important thing is you should be consistent as i said earlier yeah. and you should be consistent with marketing every day you should think what have you done to market your business uh, favorite business book which has helped you the most my favorite business book is good to great by jim collins yeah. that's jim a Collins. beautiful beautiful book right and yeah. another one is a uh, competitive advantage right that help like everyone should read it it will help you in uh, crafting out your usp and yeah. there is another book if if you really want to go out of the league and try uh, uh different things then that's play bigger but yeah right. good to great with jim collins is an uh, evergreen book and yeah. everyone must 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 at least read that book if not the definitely book. and then soon after his first well, his first book built to last built to and last. i think entrepreneurship 2.0 has just come out last year yeah. which is probably a good one to start with actually cuz it summarizes all his books mm-hmm. yeah but even they recommend to start with good to great so that's a start and yeah. that's why i took the name of that book because once you read that you are bound to buy the other two and this yeah. <laughs> the book which came last year so all the four books any great podcasts or on on learning tools you use for your own professional development uh there are a couple of uh, business growth podcasts which uh, i listen to whenever i get opportunity right while traveling or doing the the things but everyone has different uh, needs right someone wants to learn sales someone wants to do marketing so i would say just try out a couple of podcasts and see which one tunes into because a lot of people they like conversation based podcast some like just uh, one person talking type podcast right so yeah. it's up to you just just 
try out two three podcasts right as soon as you type the word lot of popular podcasts would start popping popping in and you can go from there one tool you'd recommend to help grow a small business uh like the one tool which i would say is like every small business should try to be as organized as possible so probably go ahead and start using a task management tool and make it a habit because once you start growing right things it it, it very easily things would start going out of control yeah right and if you are habitual of using these tools life would be very easy so there are a couple of tools out there like trello asana bluo mavenling teamwork right so it's up to you just choose whatever works for you and start using that tool because keeping organized like is is very important for any small business it chaos happens very fast final my favorite question what would you tell yourself on day 1 of starting out uh day 1 of starting out i'll tell tell myself that follow your instinct <laughs> and whatever you are doing just just keep doing that right like uh, every everything will eventually make sense great thanks very much for your time today shiv i think the audience got a lot of value out of what you shared with this tremendous journey over the last 10 years from three full time team team members over 100 now and helping a lot of small businesses uh, around the world so really appreciate your time Thanks a lot for having me here Troy. It was it was great conversation. I really enjoyed our time. Thanks. Thanks.